great. That's great. Thank you very much. Great. Okay. Um, first off, I just want to thank um, Business Agility Community for inviting me to come along and speak. It, it's a real pleasure and an honor to be here. And some of the conversations and some of the talks that we've had uh, today and yesterday, I, I think are just really exceptional. Um, and I would advise you to take something from all of them. Um, I'm going to start by saying something that might be controversial. Business agility doesn't care about agile. Okay. <laughs> but agile should care about business agility. They're two different things. Because business agility can be made up of a number of methods, and you've seen many here. And it is beholden to those who are using Agile to think about how it makes the business not Agile, but how do we get agility at a business level? And we don't get it by scaling up Agile. We turn Agile into something that can run the business. And that is the challenge I'm putting out to you guys in all your areas. I had a conversation earlier on about one of the guides was saying, um, and this is the business agility report from last year, that one of the biggest things that we can't get is buy-in from the top. OK, all you agile guys, think about how you can get use agile to get buy-in from the top. Because if agile is not there to solve problems, then what is it? And it really bugs me to see some really intelligent people sitting there saying, we want to do Agile, but they don't just get it. Wrong. You're looking through the wrong end of the telescope. You don't get it. All right, I'm pushing that out there. There is a very different way that businesses need to run. And you have to engage them on their terms. And really, this is what I want to talk about today. We've got to turn the telescope around. And, and if you think about it, that's a much better way of addressing the business people on business terms that they understand. And you can demonstrate by whatever multitude of methods that you want to put together that it creates business value. Because if it doesn't create business value, you're out of business. It's a really important issue. I see companies now wanting solutions to their problems when they haven't defined what their problem so they'll say, we'll go and do Scrum, we'll go and do Agile, we, we'll go and do this. Why? Well, everybody's doing it. OK, that is the blind leading the blind. So please be cautious. Oh, we were asked by our last speaker to bring some science, so hopefully I'll get a chance to do that. This has been up there while I'm talking. This is what I call a work environment. Wouldn't you like to work in a work environment where all those things were true? You know, it's respectful. As employees, you have influence on the products and the services. You really deeply understand your customers, what they are trying to do in their business. It's challenging so that you learn. Okay, you, You're getting information about the outside world, and then you bring it into colleagues, and then you're sharing this. And what does this mean for new products and services? Who do I share this with? So your whole workforce suddenly becomes a center for gathering customer intelligence about what customers need. Instead of saying, no, that's not your job. You're the product manager. You just take this one. That's functional specialization. I told you I was going to be controversial for some of you. But I'm talking about business. What's going on in the outside world? Get it. Customer intelligence, bringing it in, and then acting on that, experimenting rapidly. OK, so that's an atmosphere, what I call a work climate. And work climate is very, very important for the rest of this conversation. OK, that's me. I did write the book, wherever it's gone, Sense and Respond in 2005. It has now been updated to include the new advantages that come from Agile. When I was writing this, Lean was at its zenith, and I was using that to transform whole organizations. Then Agile came in and said, well, this makes it really easy, because Agile is born out of Lean. And if you really want to understand Agile, go and learn Lean. 
the principles, they're all there. And by the way, lean is scalable. What other methods that you want to bring in, that's what the next book is about. And I had to change it to so say it's gone beyond sense and, adapt, uh, sense and respond to now sense and adapt to bring all of that in. So let me just quickly say what I'm going to be talking about here. Because that was the intro. I'm going to talk about bu business agility. It's about embracing continuous change and continuous value creation. Not just continuous production. Continuous value creation. And it's to create differentiation. It's really, really important that for a business, you differentiate me against my competitors. Don't give me something as a me too when we do exactly the same. And you can. With business agility, you can invent new things. And it's about creating long-term profitability. And the research that I will show you has shown that some of the profiles of these organizations that take the right structures, right strategies to create the right behaviors and the right performance are linked to long-term profitability. And there's a big piece of American research to do that. I disagree there's no research out there. there are, there's plenty if you know where to look. What needs to change in your organizational infrastructure if you're taking a business that is maybe 2,000, 3,000, or in one case that I worked on, was 5,000? How do we mobilize that? Well, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. Maybe two weeks. No, I'm joking. But which part of the business do we need to deconstruct? And I will talk about that, and I'll talk about the mindset skill set and the work climate. This is what unlocks the key to that organization complexity, not just the complexity outside. Okay, and then I'm gonna, if I get time for this, is run through a number of pictures of route maps that some law, large organizations have gone through to create an adaptive organization. And there's one thing that's common. I'm not putting the map for you to copy. But the thing that's common to each of the plans is they're all very different. There is no golden bullet. There is no recipe. It is the enterprise of the human mind in organizations released to fix the problems like we haven't got buy-in at the top. We are facing our competitors. And Agile does give that great mindset, and I will prove that through this, so I'll bash on. I have my definition of what adaptive business is. You can take that picture, but I think I've given you a, a feel for what it is. It's becoming, um, it's transforming from the old way of working to a new. And I char characterize the old way as make and sell. We've got this product, we've now made it, now we need to sell it and push it on. Whereas in the agile, lean world, it's all about adapting to what the market wants before anybody else does. That's the key. And then you make what is needed. You test. You throw away. But you do that incredibly quick. And you imagine if you can galvanize your whole workforce to do that. That's what I intend to do when I work with organizations, is to get them to a position that they've changed their internal climate and the structures and the work so that they beat the pants off the competition. End of story. Because if we can beat the pants off the competition, we get job security. I've used this slide many years ago. I resurrected this just before coming on. People say you shouldn't do that, but I thought it was appropriate. What this is saying is, Performance, and I'm talking about individual people performance, being able to enact, take things on in work, being able to have responsibility. But the performance is a matter of people having choice, which is a matter of freedom, with the power to do what is needed and matters in this case, satisfy customers. But what gets in the way? The work, is it purposeful? No. It's all busy, busy, bang, bang stuff. I hope something will come of this and somebody will do something with it. 
you know, are they developing the people so that I get more freedom, autonomy, or is it putting me further and further in the box because that's how you're developing me? These are two different worldviews. Okay, am I giving them the power, the power within the job? Or am I nailing them down into small little boxes and hope that they're all combined? So, and then that creates an atmosphere of fear. If they, you're asking them to do this stuff, but then you have these constraints, and if you get it wrong, so the best way of not getting anything wrong is not to do anything and then hide for a while. So typical strength, constraints that I find working in organizations. And this is with people at, at the board level and probably the senior operating guys. The biggest problem that they've got is there's so much complexity in the organization, let alone the outside world. These are actual transcripts from um, some of the things that this company needed to break down. It's going to be in your slide set, okay? And I would say, what are the things that are really troubling the board and, more importantly, the guys who are running the business day to day? Work overburden. Great. All of these wonderful things that we can do, guys. I'm sure we've all got that time to go and read the books and experiment in work when we've already got a massive overburden. How are we going to deal with that? And there are ways of dealing with that. But work overburden is a manifestation of how, you and how well you are or not running the business. If you've got massive overburden, your strategy is probably wrong, your capability to deliver is insufficient for whatever reason, and the work is not flowing, it's getting stuck everywhere, and you have masses of, of backlog and whip all over the place, and then we're into crisis management. We'll only do the, um, the stuff that's important, and we forget the rest. Oh, but we'll have time to do that in the imagination that you will get back to them in some time in the future, which you never do. Transparency. There's no transparency at the top of the organization. The work is scattered to the winds. Everybody with their head down doing their busy, busy, bang, bang best. So let's have transparency. And using lean, agile, that gives transparency on how your business is flowing work to your customers effectively. Is it meeting the customer's purpose? And are we organizing ourselves? And do we do that with low whips and backlogs? OK. Decision making. Everybody talks about putting decision making further down in the organization. The hierarchies are a problem. So they are traditional stuff. I'll say this you get the behavior you design for or you fail to design for. Make and sell, traditional companies push the same stuff. Sense and respond are always changing what they're doing because the marketplace is doing it, is changing. So I introduced this very simple model originally for Sense and Respond and developed with uh, um, some climate measures. It's quite simply this, engaging and understanding who? The customer. What's their purpose? Learning and sharing. Having found out how well or not you're delivering to the customer, you bring it in and you share it with people. This is leading towards a diagnostic model that I will share with you in a moment. Okay. Then we'll say, well, leading and choosing. All right, who does the leading? It's much lower down in the organization. And we choose to do one or the other. If we get it wrong, we choose again. We don't make mistakes, we just choose again. And finally, improving and adapting. Because improving is OK, but adapting means changing. But the thing that I've found working with a number of universities over the last couple of years, there's this thing called the work climate. It's phenomenal. If you're in HR, you probably know what I'm talking about. So let's have a look at what this work climate means. Let's just dig into that a little bit. The work climates are the thinking, feelings, and perceptions of managers, staff, and the leaders. Their combined thinking is in response to the way the organization is set up. It's rules, regulations, what you reward me for is, a, is actually measurable in the climate. And the climate indicates how aligned your business is, is to even your own strategy. 
your structures, delivery capability. So now if we could run a survey with this to see what, what is going on in the climate, this is just everybody's perceptions. We run a massive survey, getting everybody to do that to see what the organizational climate is like. So let's get back to this. Okay, what we have discovered from our research is no surprise. There are different types of organization. Well, there's an insight. But there are four key types of operation. There are others, but these were the biggest ones. There is the mass production, the factory, the industrial model, represented by a bus because it's not bespoke. There's another one called mass customization, which is a little enhanced. And I use a pizza slice to say, well, it's still mass produced, but you've got some choice, but it's still mass produced. Those are make, make and sell businesses. One size doesn't fit all, but we try and fit everybody in. Then we move into the adaptive space, network specialisms. And I've seen a lot about this today. This is both, a this is a two-edged sword. If you go to network specialists in your business, moving to network organizations before the people have capability to run them, you will just disable all your people. They will be lost. And that is bloody cruel. It's not only cruel to them, it's cruel to your business, it's cruel to your customers. And your performance that you were supposed to en enhance in dives down. And adaptive. So the top two come from this mass production factory mentality, and then we have the net. So let's have a look at the characteristics of some of these, shall we? So what I've done here, I've just picked three characteristics. There are 20, and if, if you want to get the rest of this, you can download this presentation from, from my website uh, to get the others. And this presentation will be uh, available through Business Agility anyway. So let's just take a look at this. Leadership style, on the bottom, command and control, direct and control. These are different ways of operating and designing your business. And it carries with it a whole bunch of stuff you've got to do to maintain it. You move it into spe specialisms of networks. It's now much more of a consultative feel. Up to listen and adapt. What's the management focus? Staff utilization, cost, intense, work, cost reduction, work intensification, all the way up, new products, co-creativity. Co the problem that we get, okay, is we say we are trying to do that up there, but the business model and everything is set up to do the opposite. So we betwixt and between. But the thing that makes you decide which of these you do is on what competitive basis are you going to run? Economies of scale, low margins, or trusted advisor, it, so where does Agile and Lean fit into this? It's obviously the top two. So this is the picture. This is the kill-up picture that you must take, and I'm going to show you in a second the actual science behind this. These are some questions, OK? Because each of these businesses do those things in different ways. They have different solutions to those. And by asking questions about those four areas, you can tell which of the internal desks you are. Now, if you're an agile um, coach or anything else, take this picture on. This is, this is the money picture. And I could stop here, but what I would ask you to take away is go and find out what is a mass production. Are you mass production or you're the other? Um, a listen and adapt organization, and you had some characteristics just now. Just decide which them of those you are. Then you ask your team or your business those questions. That's the money picture. So now let's turn this into a science. I am going to show you a scientific slide of one major organization that took this survey so that we can see what type of organization it is. All right, what we have here, the four types of organization, we have the industrial model and we have the adaptive model. Engaging, learning, leading, and adapting down the bottom. This turned out to be 
like a manufacturing company. Yet these were, this company was 2,000 strong and producing top-of-the-range software. Yet the way they arranged their business internally was very different. But the way they sold their customer was they were up where the transformation objective was. Okay, because we are heavily engaged with the customer at that level. So the rhetoric and the actuality were different. 18 months later, we got to this. And you can see their adaptability score had risen. Okay? So in order to do that, every organization needs to create four capabilities. What I do with them is I help them learn how to design these organizations. I help them learn how to change them from a leadership point of view. I help them learn how to adopt the new business practices, the new strategies, or whatever. Okay? But the other thing is you have to teach the ordinary manager on how to run an adaptive business because it's not the same as a make and sell. Thank you very much.